Uh, getting one is totally fine. Now what do I take? Okay, get plus two AP. One thing you have to be very, very careful about. See, you kind of went too fast. You went too fast here. You're slightly coming to their side and you don't want that. Now, let me check my recordings real quick. Uh, also, if I have this, I don't think Morngrim will, will mind. I'll show like a snippet of our coaching before. I, I was doing 1v1 with him because I wanted to teach him this principle of holding the wave, okay? So I want you to see a, the, how the wave goes here. Look at, look at what I'm doing to the wave. So I told him to pick Yasuo into me 1v1 because he was struggling with an assassin matchup in this specific matchup. And I wanted to, I wanted to show him exactly how he can never go into danger. Literally never go into danger. So I'm just going to show you like a little bit of this um, early, early lane. So Yasuo comes. Look at, look at me. I'm standing. I haven't auto attacked a minion yet. I literally haven't auto attacked a minion. So we're auto attacking now. Clear, clear, clear. He's three to three to zero. So it's going to be nine to six. Now I'm kind of clearing. Now I'm sp spacing up. Now I'm, now I'm doing more clear because I'm getting closer. Four to three. The rule is when you're playing versus assassin, n plus one, okay? Or n minus one, whichever side you look at it from, right? You want to have one minion less, n minus one. So you always want to have one minion less than the enemy. I mean, it depends obviously like on the positioning, like whether you're closer to your turret or, or farther. But you always want to keep one enemy minion advantage. Because that will push to you inevitably. Also, enemies don't really pay attention to wave management too much, so they're gonna push towards you. So this is what you're doing. It's it's basic, simple math. You always attack after him. Look at what's happening. It's three minutes, three minutes in the game, and we haven't moved to my turret, to his turret, to his side. Nowhere. The entire three minutes have been played, or minute and thirty, were played in literally my side. This this twenty five percent of the mid lane. That's exactly how we play. Look, and this goes on. And this goes on, and I keep doing this to him. I keep doing this to him, and I asked him to, to play like Yasuo into me like as best he could. I keep doing this to him, like for a good two, three minutes, and then I tell him like, do, do you understand what's happening? Like, do you understand how we got here? What is, what am I doing? What are you doing? And I make him articulate it, and then he explains what I was doing to him the entire time. But people don't use it. People don't use this. After showing him this, he immediately understood, like it clicked. He could articulate the position, and he could understand What's happening and why he was unable to reach me. I was asking you, like, why didn't you punish me in the lane? And he said, I couldn't. Why? Why couldn't you punish me? Well, I can't go in under your turret. Okay, like, how did we get there? Because I, 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 I don't know. The waves just got there. You, you'd never let me hit you. And I explained him the N-1 rule. It's like, as long as you're doing this. See, we got to level 5 and we, we moved literally nowhere from the lane. And that's exactly one of the ways you can deal with this, right? That is exactly one of the waves, ways you can deal with Akali. So you already fucked it up here by putting it to her side. Right? And if now if she's smart, she can slow it down. And level 2, when wave 2 comes, she goes behind the wave and you can't move. Right? I feel really embarrassed over this gameplay. Don't be. Bro, this is silver. Silver 1, you're gold. And I've seen people in Master and, and Diamond do this. Akali's not managing very well, so this is good for you. Uh, but he is, see... By adding fuel to that minion, now you had to go in closer. One thing I never said was wave management. Wave management is the most complex one to learn, the most abstract one to learn, because whatever you do, the you will perceive the effects of it like one minute down the line, 30 seconds down the line, two minutes down the line, and it's very fucking abstract. You're not going to notice it unless you're specifically looking for it and looking to analyze the game. And most people just don't step out of their bubble and look to do so, because they just play the game. Talon is in lane, fucking freeze his ass. Freeze him right here. Yasuo in lane, freeze him. Akali in lane, freeze her. Her only place, dive. And trust me, Morn literally came in. Morgan, the, the clip I showed you, came in the other day and just tell me, told me, like, I won four, four games after, lost only two. And I just did the thing you said about holding the waves. And assassins started suiciding. They started suiciding under my turret. Because people don't have brain. Like, they're going to come into the matchup. They, they're going to perceive the matchup. They're going to perceive the matchup as uh, it's a must win for me, right? He's like, because she's thinking I have to win this matchup. And if you're positioning so correctly that she can never punish you, her brain malfunctions. And she's like, wait, why am I not winning? Why am I not winning? And she's just going to go in. She will go in whether you're standing here or here because she gets frustrated for not winning the matchup that she's supposed to be winning. Because your goals are different. Your vincon is to survive and farm. Her vincon is to kill you, right? 
If I freeze the lane one day roam, not if you freeze it properly. How can she freeze it? How can she roam if you're freezing? She's losing minus six minutes immediately if she lose, leaves the lane. She's minus six in experience and CS. If she does that, and if she does a full roam, she will lose 12. And if she loses 12 and doesn't get a kill back, she, she trolled. She does two roams like that, she's out of the game. Out of the game. That's sin roaming. That's sin roaming. Uh, a bit of a game issue that sometimes it works. Like Katarina is going to level 3 roam, get a double kill, even though she's sinning and wasting like 20 minions mid lane. And she's still going to proceed to win the game over that happens. If you can kill her like before she does the R2, it could actually work here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... As I said, if you hold good positioning, assassins will run it down. And there's a pretty good chance for, of a kill there, because even if she lands the R1, she's not going to kill you unless she lands R2, and you just have to pop her b before she lands R2. That's the whole potential of the kill. They actually suicide. Like, I've seen this so many times. And if you just hold good position, they're stupid. So, the issue here is, like, you got to shove it and you can't. So you call this guy again. He's here, at your disposal. Call this guy. Call the man, dude. Call him right here, because if not, you without mana will take too long to shove this, and by the time you recall, she'll be back, and it's gonna be really bad. You were right about the brain malfunction. Yeah, I'm telling you, dude. I'm telling you. I've had numerous coachings, and I've I've done this back like when I was like season two, learning the game. I've done this. Like I I, I learned how to play the game, kinda, and you can manipulate people. See what you did with with the vape here. See what you did with the vape here. And we could easily predict this wave state. This time you can shove because you have mana. Shove. I know you want stacks, but you gotta shove. Okay. So this is another scenario. Another scenario. The, the same principle applies. It's just a bit more nuanced here. Because you're doing the slow push, which is... Again, we gotta think ahead. Like, what? what is this game gonna look in 30 seconds? You, you, got, you gotta think about that. Like, you gotta think this in waves, like wave 1, wave 2, wave 3. Okay, what happens when wave 2 arrives if you push like this? You will meet it here. And you're gonna have the same exact position. Also, what's happening on the other side in 30 seconds? Akali's recalling, and she's gonna be back in 30 seconds. So if you fast forward this game uh, by exact 30 seconds, we got, what, 810? So we go to 840, okay? See what's happening. See what's happening at 8.40. We went 30 seconds ahead. Your wave is pushing, slow pushing, and Akali is engaging you. Right? <laughs> Do you see the issue? Again, all the trade doesn't matter. You, you can even potentially win this trade if enemies fuck it up. It doesn't make it a consistent play, because very often it's not going to work. And it's, for sure it's not going to work when you get higher elo, because you're not supposed to win this 2v2 when Nocturne doesn't evolve ever in your fucking life, especially when Akali's fit. So... Any of this trade is just pretty bad. And you don't want it. You don't, you don't want to invite this trade. It's not that you're bad at CSing. Like, you're, you're not bad at, like, oh, last hitting minions. Because that's what people very often associate with, with farming. Like, and then they lose their mind when they see a challenger streamer lose a cannon on auto attack. They're like, dude, he's challenger. He missed the cannon on auto attack. No, he doesn't have 250 CS at 24 minutes because he... He's perfect at, like, last clicking, clicking right? He's, per he's getting good CS because he knows how to manage waves. That's how you get CS. By not being idle in the game, so that means doing camps in between, and also farming the waves, like, properly. Right? You're having shit CS because you're leaking, you're siphoning minions every fucking time, because you, you set up a slow push and siphon them. I, I was doing this, like, a lot, but subconsciously, and then when I, when I tried to, like, externalize, it was a lot better, because when I was playing on stream for the first time, like, I don't know, 2015, 16, I... I started asking myself, on, because I was trying to like, externalize my thoughts, and I'm an introvert, and I didn't really talk, talk too much, and it's pretty fucking weird to talk out loud alone in the room. So what I would start to do is, like, to fill in the dead air, the silence in the broadcast, I would ask myself, okay, what do we do now, what do we do now? Like, I would ask myself that while I was playing the game. And I would say, okay, what do we do now? And then I'm going to answer my own question, right? You pose a question, and you answer it yourself. Because that's how humans work. You can't find an answer to the question you didn't pose. Could you re-explain the one minion more or less thing? Okay, um, you just have to wait for the enemy. So that's the, that's the enemy here. Um, this is the enemy right there. 
And this is you, usually like you're at the diagonal in lane. Because both of you guys are kind of avoiding the direct line of sight most of the time. Kind of finding a opening. So you come to the lane and this is this only usually works if you're like versus assassins because you want to you want lane to be in your court so you want lane to be in this area this is the area where you want your lane to be in that's where you want to keep it so from neutral let's say um because this here is would be the turret you want to keep it just above the turret right you want to keep it just above the turret so what do you do when you want to achieve that? You think ahead, how do, how do we do that? So let, you create a couple of different ideas. Like, what if I just push now? No, that doesn't work. Because if I kill minions, we're going to go for, you call that push for, for a reason. So what if I do nothing? Okay, that there's a couple of things that can happen if you do nothing. If you do nothing, enemy can just go and auto attack all the time. He can be auto attacking minions all the time. Like spam auto attacking on cooldown, right? And in that case, you just have to wait for him to basically kill one minion. I, I don't do it. Like, you do it, like, cleaner than that. You kind of just mirror him, like, auto-attack after auto-attack at higher reload. But let's say for the sake of simplicity, um, you let him kill one minion. And then you just follow suit. You start auto-attacking minions all the time now. Right? So he killed this one in the first time interval. And now you have um, six on five. And then you start attacking, mirroring him. So he kills this, you kill this. So now you have five over four, right? And four, five will always be bigger than four and he's gonna push, right? You just have to make sure he has more minions than you. So that's for the, for the case he starts auto attacking immediately. There's a case where he doesn't do anything. He just stands still. In that case, first of all, your range versus an assassin. So if they're standing in lane longer, they're prolonging their danger. So you come up, you auto attack them. And then they come up to you and then like there's all the like footsies and shenanigans there. Like you try to cue him every time he goes for a minion. Because if he's not auto-attacking ever, this is something I explained to Morgrim the other day as well. Like if he's just sitting still and not auto-attacking, you know he's going to come to auto-attack when it's 0 HP. Because he's becoming predictable. And every time he goes in for the auto-attack, you go slap him in the face with a Q plus auto-attack, right? Auto-attack plus Q. You slap him in the face every single fucking minion. And you can still let him push before you. Because, yeah, I mean, usually also, like, um, where you're, you're doing, like, this, we're talking about against assassins. Assassins will come, and they're going to try to trade you sometimes. He's going to trade you, which means, because your wave is closer, it's going to focus him. So the wave is going to attack him while the enemy wave is hitting your wave. That also creates a bit more push. So then you just lost hit, he lost hits while you poke him. So at the end of the lane, like, he's sitting at, like, 50% HP, you're nearly full. And the wave is pushing towards you still. That's it. So when you want to capitalize on this advantage and you feel like the jungler won't punish you, now there's like more different setups and scenarios. Then the wave two comes and it's very close to your third. So you can kind of start the bounce. You hard shove this. You, you hard shove the wave. And he's low, so you can't really last hit anymore. Because you, you have a feeling he's going to back off. And then you like shove him under the turret. And I have like 11 minions under third, 11 CS. And he's going to get like five out of those because he's low and then you're poking him. You have a chance to kill him. You have a chance to dive him. You have a chance to roam. You can do whatever you want. And you get even more advantage. 